This time, they took off just after dawn in Texas, anticipating that if Starship succeeded, it would travel around the world and land in Hawaii just before sunrise. Right away, everything went better than the first flight, the deluge system. Protect the pad and we do not have rock tornado and all 33 engine lit up up you can even see these amazing rock diamond forms and the streams of 33 engine all working in unison to lift this 52,000 ton vehicle towards the skies now if you haven't living under a rock you might have seen a bunch of news stories reporting that this mission was a failure i'm not agree with that this was a vastly more successful mission than the previous flight it is a success most importantly the mission got through and successfully separated starship before boosters failed and the later starship failed before reaching orbital velocity so first of all let's talk about hot staging i hear we synchronize the telemetry at the bottom of the screen to be in line with what we see on video hot staging is where the second stage lights its engine while the first stage is engine still firing and that means both vehicles continue to experience positive g's and therefore keep the fuel at the bottom of the tank to try to pay attention to the engine diagram in the bottom corner of the screen but you see the booster cuts down to three engine and those are running at 50 percent thrust then we got the three vacuum engine on the second stages kicking and this provide enough thrust to pass the vehicle apart allowing to them to continue this flip over and v light the number of the engines which will perform with pushed back notice however that the number of the engine butt and also watch the bottom of the booster we start to see the flashes that appears to be coincidence with some of the flashes there's a very clearly problem with the thrust and it's keep getting worse until eventually the whole booster finally gives a catastrophic blast destroying at least from the booster points of view i think that hard staging looked like it was a success it's no clear how how much testing they did on the hot staging dome but it looked like this protected the booster because there's no obvious damage there's no leaks anything happening from the end of thing so let's re-watch stage separation in slow motion first of all it looked like they're shutting down engines in block of five in the two outer rings and then presumably throttle that core engine down to 50 percent as the engine shut down cold propellant will continue to flow and then why we see much more obvious pluma at that point also noted that its speed is now decreasing due to gravity losses not hot staging happened the three vacuum engine life first this looks spectacular by the way now why this booster speed it drops very rapidly as the pressure on those engine push against the top of the booster and we can trust those numbers that means the booster had negative acceleration and the propellant would have stalled it to slr forwards now at the time the booster starts that relight all the engine in fact you can see them coming on the booster has all but one light successfully meanwhile starship has all its engine lit and it's going off on its own way but we are going to follow booster right now you have to ask why did that one engine fail right now is the engine just bad or is something else and i suspect that the problem is the fuel feeding system because we then get one at the three core engine never went through a shutdown and restart but it now turned off and i think that the problem is with the propellant feeding the engine and now more engine are failing and i think this is either fluid hammer or fuel slush or a combination of these so fuel slow is obviously a problem and you have got a large booster that doing this big maneuver that can cause the fluid to slow around in the tanks uncover the parts that are feeding the engines and it gas gets into the fuel lines feeding those pumps it will can destroy the engine fluid hammer is a big issue with this big rocket because you have many engines moving tons of propellant through the system and when you shut the engine down all the propellant has the momentum and that momentum can hit hard on the walls and it can damage the pipes that's why they shut down the engines five at a time rather than shutting them down all at once that's what happened on the n1 rocket fourth flight we shut down half the engine and destroyed the plumbing so i think at this point we have serious leaks engine in engine but at this point the rocket is mostly wounded and the engines are dying one by one as they are either ingesting gas or perhaps fire is damaging something else so spacex are going to have to take a long hard look at the engine shutdown and relight sequence and of course the flip maneuver so the next question is what causes the booster to actually explode we see some catastrophic events at the bottom at the boosters but then the actual final event from the middle of the booster spacex haven't said anything about deactivating the flight termination system 
the automatic flight termination system wouldn't have activated the booster was well inside its trajectory but it is completely plausible if you have a high energy even in the base that the force can propagate the down commas and damage bulkhead between the fuel which could then subsequently fail in the manner now one thing i didn't notice was the engine seems to fail more on one side than the other side so i wonder was this due to rotation of the rocket being aligned with those you know if there was alignment that would indicate the rotation was actually critically important to whatever caused the engine failure by carefully watch the video you can match the engine on the booster to the engine on the telemetry display and what we see is they actually know the station does not appear to be lined up with the order of the failure of the engine so i am hoping we get more information on that in particular i would like to know if spacex actually registered in a flight termination system activation or if it was an organic event but moving onward and downwind we have two starship appear to fly perfectly so the next several minutes we even hear a terminal guidance call that's where it's trying to trim out and find the perfect target are but now the target speed would be about 22,000 km per hour as we get really close to that the spacecraft it's low on the horizon and there's a puff engine and the engine sharp stop and then there's a bigger puff of gas and at that point telemetry features and we presume that was the end of spacecraft destroying itself but i think the second stage failure started a little earlier than if you rewind about the seven minute mark there is the puff of a gas and that could be some kind of onboard failure i think that it may be related to oxygen getting dumped so again if you look at the telemetry and if you presume that the telemetry is honest we have not just the engine the speed and the attitude we have a locks and a methane gaze showing how fast the vehicle or how much propellant the vehicle has left and we take these and we play if clip faster you can see the oxygen is always slightly higher than the methane for the most of the flight and then just around the seven minute mark when thrust that puff it's visibly drops faster so that oxygen going somewhere could be going overboard or it could be leaking out of an engine power had a fueling some kind of fire which then subsequently turns into something more catastrophic if we skip over to a minute later there's a small puff couple of seconds before the much large cloud of gas and the question is was that a small catastrophic event which cascaded and destroyed the vehicle or was this or something that triggered the flight termination system early it might be that the vehicle just detected what had depleted the oxygen it was going to be able to reach its orbit so it decided to trigger the termination system to avoid the large debris basically cascading over say Africa so where did this so where did this debris end up well if you skip forward all a little you can see the camera flowing pants down to the engine so we know this is spacecraft but at the point not that the not that far above the horizon because it was so far downrange we estimated it was perhaps 900 to 1000 km downrange over the gulf of mexico it was 148 km of moving at to 4000 km per hour at in the rotation of the earth and we get that it sort of probably made out to the middle of atlantic if we assume no at much middle of that middle of that middle of the atlantic if we assume atmospheric drag but i thought it's pretty clear this x starship space x starship is more successful than the last launch we are hoping then the left we are hoping that we are hoping in the next launch the starship can have this extremely successful flight hey guys please hit the like button and do subscribe my channel this, this is for today thank you bye bye